Hey everybody, Victor from Victor G Photography here and I just wanted to go over uh, what I use to power my strobes when I'm out in the field. Uh, have you ever been out on a shoot and really wanted to properly light a subject but you just didn't have enough power for your speed lights to compete with the brightness of outside? Or uh, what if you have an actual strobe or a monolight that has the power but it isn't exactly mobile because you can't get the it needs to be plugged into an outlet or anything like that. So there's actually a solution for all those and it's a portable power pack. Um, there are a couple different brands that make the power packs. Vagabond of course is the main one and they've created a few different kinds of packs that deliver the power that is needed as well as the portability to bring it along with you wherever you go. Um, <clears throat> now the power packs from Vagabond are pretty expensive and if you don't have 300 bucks laying around just to invest in something like that uh, there is a do-it-yourself solution that ended up costing me around a hundred dollars altogether just to you know make it with the same amount of power. With the rate of technology uh, batteries are actually getting a lot smaller and more powerful and cheaper than you know they were even a couple months ago. Uh, the batteries that I'm using are the same kind of batteries that you'll see in the Vagabond and also the Vagabond 2 um, but not in the newer ones like the Mini or the newest version of Vagabonds because they've actually moved on to lithium-ion batteries which are much, a lot smaller, more portable, um, but these ones that I made work perfectly out in the field. Uh, so these are all to specs, the ones that I have um, with the Vagabond system, but I'll give you a list of things that you're going to need to buy, plus also I'll kind of put it all together in front of you just so that you see what it looks like. What you're going to first have to buy is an uh, inverter for the power pack. The ones that I bought is a 300 watt uh, power, continuous power with a surge of 600 watts. Uh, it's a pure sine wave inverter and I got it for about like 80 bucks on Amazon. You got to make sure that it's a pure sine because the regular inverter won't be able to cycle the amount of power that you're going to need to be able to use your strobe effectively. Uh, 300 watts is actually enough power to power all of my power packs plus it's also the same kind that's in the Vagabonds. Um, you know, and I use 400 watt seconds and 600 watt second uh, strobes with no problem whatsoever. The second thing that you're actually going to need is your battery. Um, these are uh, sealed lead acid batteries, so these are the ones that you actually want to get. They will actually have two taped together, uh, but these are both 7 amp hour battery powers. Uh, and you want anywhere from 12 to, well, 12 and up as far as your amp average um, to be able to properly power your strobes long enough to be able to use them uh, enough. I also have a 32 amp hour battery but actually I prefer to just use the two smaller ones and then just parallel them together so that uh, the two 7 amp hour batteries actually will end up equaling out to a 14 hour amp hour battery. Um, these were at Fry's, I got them, they're about 15 bucks each, they were on sale but I've actually seen a lot of other ones go for a lot cheaper. Um, I think I saw a 32 one online at one point for like $35 that you can get shipped for you. Uh, I prefer the smaller batteries just because they're a lot lighter. Um, I can fit them in the bag a lot easier and the charge times are a lot quicker. There is a way to make a lithium ion version uh, battery to connect to the inverter but I just haven't figured that one out yet so when that's done I'll, I'll make another video for you guys. Then you want to get is cables. Um, cables are very important. You want to make sure that they're actually uh, the gauge is strong enough to be able to handle the load that's going to be going through the battery into the inverter. So uh, 12 gauge is good, 10 gauge is better. Um, you can pick them up for a couple bucks anywhere. There's also a charger uh, that I have for this. It's a float charger and maintainer. I got it at uh, Harbor Freight and that was probably about like 10, 15 dollars but you want to make sure that it will work on sealed lead acid batteries because if you get the wrong one your battery will actually end up exploding because it doesn't have the ability to monitor when it needs to be uh, stopped and the power to go into it and so you really want to make sure that that's that's properly uh, charging. Uh, the strobe that I'm using for this one is actually a really cheap one I got on Amazon it's about $150 uh, a while ago so now it's probably a lot cheaper but this is a 400 watt second strobe um, it's pretty powerful it's enough to get all the shots that I need when I'm out and about so first thing I did was I connected the batteries to make them run parallel uh, you just connect black to black red to red 
and this will keep the voltage down to the same level of 12 volts, but then the amperage will double. If you end up doing uh, a red to black, red to black, that actually will double your volts. So instead of being 12 volts, it'd be 24 volts, and it'd only be running seven amp hours. So that's just a, a quick thing that you really want to consider, you know, like properly doing when you're plugging everything in. For the inverter, there's a couple different uh, styles to connect to. I just grabbed the alligator clips real quick just because they work really easily and I can control them. Um, so when you're linking batteries like this, you want to connect one to the positive terminal of one and then one to the negative terminal of the other. And that's really as simple as you need it. Um, you can tell, you can just see right here, I'll go ahead and turn on the, right there, and the green light means that it's ready to go. All right, I have everything plugged in uh, into the battery, into the inverter, and the inverter into the strobe itself. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn it on real quick. It'll give a beep when it's ready. Now, um, because of this one, it does actually have a longer recycle time, just in general, because this strobe isn't the greatest. Um, but I mean, even with the, even at full power, it takes a while, but when it's at lower powers, it takes next to nothing. But when you buy bigger, better strobes, the flash time will be a lot shorter. So let me start with low power, and then we'll test it out. And see, it's just ready almost immediately. I'm going to go ahead and raise it all the way up to full power. And it's ready. It's about two to three seconds. And see the battery will last roughly probably uh, three to four hundred full flashes before it needs to be recharged with something this big. But I mean, if you're out in the field, you don't need that much power. So, I mean, this works perfectly uh, at one quarter, one eighth, one half, everything that you need. So uh, let me know what you think of the video. Oh, also, let me go ahead and put it all together so that you guys know what it looks like. So everything actually fits perfectly right here in this old camera bag that I have. Um, I'm able to fit the both batteries plus the inverter in here. Uh, you know, you keep it open just so that air can get to it, plus you also have to plug in your uh, cord to it. But I mean, other than that, this whole thing probably weighs about 8 pounds, maybe 10 pounds at most. Um, and it makes a really good sandbag, so you can attach it to your light stand um, or, you know, to the strobe itself so that you don't have any worries about it getting blown over or uh, falling apart or, or come crashing down and then breaking all your toys. So uh, that's the video. Let me know what you think. Um, if you have any questions or anything, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, just let me know, and I hope you guys have a great day. Have fun shooting.